Good morning, my fellow Whovians, or people that are interested in my opinions on Doctor Who for some reason. I'm going to be talking about the first two episodes of the new season of Doctor Who. It is still unclear whether it is called season 14 or season 1, because different sources list it with different things. And it is also unclear as to whether these are the episodes 1 and 2 of the season, or episodes 2 and 3 of the season. Because again, multiple sources list it differently. Um, with, uh, it's going to be really hard to title these videos, because um, some sources include uh, The Church on Ruby Road as the first episode of the season, even though that was the Christmas special. So it's, it's, it's a mess. It's a mess. The titling scheme, the organization of this is a mess. But... What matters, really, is the content. So today, I'm going to be talking about just that. Now, before I jump into these new two episodes, I want to give my quick, if you haven't watched my video on the church on Ruby Road, I thought it was incredible. I know it's cheesy, I know it has a Return of the Jedi-esque musical sequence, but I loved it to death. I thought it, like... It hit every note, right note in introducing the new kid doctor and the new companion. It made me fall in love with them already. Like, it was just a perfect, perfect first episode for this doctor. And, like, I would say, like, I don't like giving number eight, but, like, it's a 10 out of 10. Like, I thought the Church of Ruro was phenomenal. So I was very excited to see, um, to see where this season is going. And... First and foremost, I'll talk about Space Baby is the first episode, and um, it was pretty good. It was pretty solid. It was, like, a little... There were some, like, plot holes, particularly around, like, the nanny person. Like, there were definitely plot holes that were pretty glaring, and there was definitely, like, weird contrivances throughout. But um, overall, like, it was pretty solid. Um, it, like, you know, it, it, it established this tone of fun while also being able to handle seriousness as well. And um, I felt like the, um, the Church on Ruby Road did that very well as well, but it like continued that that form. It felt like almost like a natural continuation to that story, where it was like, okay, it's the same kind of vibe. And I, I really liked it. I thought it was very solid. Um, they're really, in both this episode and the next one, they're really doubling down on this timeless child shit. And I thought Russell T. Davies would come in and try to bury that to the best of his uh, ability, just never acknowledge that shit. But they're doubling down. They've referenced in, I think, all three of uh, the um, 15th Doctor's episodes so far. 14th Doctor, 15th. It's, un it's a mess. <laughs> but uh, yeah. They've referenced it in all three episodes so far. So, like, he's really doubling down on the Timeless Child shit. And I wonder if it connects to his seasonal arc that he's setting up with the um, the one who waits and the Pantheon and all that shit. Um, uh, I'm not the biggest fan of it. You'll get to my, <laughs> you'll get to my uh, thoughts on uh, the next episode. But, um, yeah, I wonder if it's all connected and he's going to actually, like, give like, fill in the gap that the Timeless Child story left of where Doctor was originally from and, like, like hold down on that? Like, because I could see that being what happens in the climax. Like, the Doctor realizes he's part of the Pantheon and is able to defeat, like, the the Pantheon leadership for that reason. Um, and I don't know how I would feel about that uh, because... I've always found the core of the doc Doctor Who is that, like, for me, at least, I I'm going to my Timeless Child rant now, but I'll just go very quickly. Um, the me, the Doctor is a normal person from his society that decided to make a difference. You know, that's the vibe I get. Like, first of all, like, I'm watching the first Doctor now. And obviously it started as just curiosity, but it eventually, like, it's like, hey, I have this 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 great ability, privilege being born into the society that no one is really using for good, and I'm going to use that for good. And that's, like, the core of his character. And, like, it's kind of root. root Timeless Child kind of fucked that up. Anyway, enough about Timeless Child. I've talked enough over the years about Timeless Child. But... Um, so let's go into the, um, yeah, I'll, I'll say the first episode was solid, had some holes, but, uh, let's go into the Devil's Chord. <sighs> I've seen a lot of praise for this episode. I've seen it floating around. I will say Jinx Monsoon's performance was great. Um, you know, I think there, there wasn't a lot of direction 
for her character other than being insane. Like, she's supposed to be the daughter of the toy maker from uh, the Giggle and previous classic Who episodes. And what I loved about the toy maker as an antagonist is that, like, you know, he his fatal his whole shtick was that he like everyone has to abide by his rules. But that was his fatal flaw, that even he sets these parameters on even himself. And that was his fatal flaw. He was a very interesting character. But um, the maestro, his child, um, is... <sighs> it's very unclear what their direction is supposed to be. Um, it's crazy and batshit, but... And it's very fun. It's a very fun direction. But there's no cohesiveness to the character, if that makes sense, like there was with the toy maker. But I am I'm just gonna go and say this was an awful episode. A lot of people are giving it praise. It was terrible. Um probably in my top five or top ten worst episodes of Doctor Who. And Doctor Who has this duality where it just bounces back and forth between the worst shit you've ever seen and masterpieces. And I think that's, like, the, kind of the overall appeal of the show. Like, oh, what do we get this week, you know? And, you know, I'm not saying, like, the series is doomed or the season is doomed or anything like that. Like, because the first, the Church of Ruo's masterpiece, um, Space Babies was pretty solid. It wasn't, ama- it wasn't like, a masterpiece, but it was pretty solid. Um, so... You know, I'm not going to say that the show's doomed or anything, because it's like, what, there's always duds in different seasons. But this episode was god-fucking-awful. And, okay. <laughs> the Beatles are a core component of this episode. And if you know me, you know the Beatles are something I love and cherish in my life, probably equally as much as Doctor Who. Um, and so the combination of two of my favorite things in the world, Doctor Who and the Beatles, I was like, oh my God, this could be my favorite episode. Like, I thought it was going to be a historical about the Beatles with the maestro trying to interfere. And it sort of is that. But they are so wasted <laughs> in this story. They, they have, they're barely anything to do. And I, I know it's probably they were like pushed to the side because they got actors like to that did not look at all or act at all like the Beatles. But like, why get those? Why put the Beatles in this story in the first place? Like, I understand it's like like you know the vibe. The vibe is there, and the vibe was immaculate. But <laughs> it's like, it's like why? It was such a waste. Like, you're going to finally put the Beatles in a Doctor Who story, and it just the biggest wasted potential you could ever do. And I really, really hope they go back and do it later, like, later down the line, years from now, do a Beatles episode that's actually, like, proper and good and pays a good tribute to the Beatles instead of just having them as, like, a throwaway MacGuffin uh, with, like, three lines. You know, it, <laughs> it was, it was, uh, it was rough. And, like, there's some cool, interesting meta that's, that's that they introduced, of course, in the Church and Ruby Road in this that, like, seems that the Doctor is aware that they're in a TV show. And I'm wondering if that's, like, an intentional new direction for the character. Like, oh, the Doctor was always aware he was in a TV show, and that's just going to continue. Or if that's a twist of this season that this season the doctor realizes he's, he's like trapped in a tv show and that's gonna be part of the plot or something maybe like the one who waits as like the seemingly leader of the pantheon that they're setting up like maybe the whole twist is that he's like a like a broadcast or tv being like because that's what it seems like it seems like these like uh different members of the pantheon like send around a theme like the toy maker um was obviously play and the maestro is music and like i wonder if like there's going to be an entity that's like tv focused and um is or like recording focused and the doctor is aware of that presence um because in this episode there was like multiple acknowledgments to that and um like there's the part where he he says the he thought the music was uh diegetic or whatever (laughs) and there's the part where he like winks at the camera and then it goes into this insane 
ridiculous musical sequence. Um, some okay, okay. Somehow I had no problem with the musical sequence in um, in the Church on Ruby Road, but this musical sequence was just just rubbed me. I guess it's because it's at the end of like a shit episode, but like it just rubbed me the wrong way. I'm like fuck off. Like, um, but I will say, like, um, I absolutely love this new iteration of the Doctor and Ruby. Like, I love how vulnerable this Doctor is. I think that, like, when when he did the by generation and uh, sort of let Tenant rest, um, I think he sort of like, you know shed that superhero persona where the doctor is like i can do anything i <laughs> my um chaos chaos anyway uh <laughs> but yeah he sort of shed that superhero persona and um sort of like like and left it left it to rest and i can sense like now it's like okay i'm just a guy you know like there's stuff i can't do and i'm vulnerable and it reminds me a little, like, it's a very, very different character. It reminds me a little bit, I've been watching the first Doctor in a way, where the first Doctor is constantly just like, I don't know how to do that. Uh, I can't do that. Like, I don't have the ability to do, you know? And, like, I assume the the Doctor, like, the first Doctor, as I'm watching Classic Who for the first time, is going to have an arc where they realize that they can, and they have that ability. But, like, I feel like there's, there's, there's bravery in admitting when you don't know what to do. And I feel like um, the fifth the new doctor is handling that really well. And there's such like Ruby and the doctor are such like charismatic characters and just so fucking likable that like, I just want to see them like go on adventures and travel together so much. And I think that's the point. It like the likability levels are off the charts to where like, I'm in love with it. Like both of them already, <laughs> like, and there's only been like three episodes with them, you know? So yeah, but, but all's to say like, the Devil's Chord was really fucking bad, <laughs> I guess. Um, but Space Babies was really solid. And I think that's my overall opinions. There's probably some stuff I'm forgetting as I'm doing this off the cuff. Uh, I just watched it last night and just woke up and started recording this. Um, but yeah, overall, like next episode, we're getting a uh, Moffat written one off, which I think is Moffat's absolute specialty, is his one offs are just always incredible and i'm hoping this is like a really memorable like moffat one off like blink or like silence in the library and force of the dead um you know like stuff like that and i'm excited i'm excited um but yeah i think that's my overall thoughts uh let me know what you think in the comments below i'd be very interested you could if you completely disagree with me i'd love to hear your takes um because I, i'd love to see what people loved about the episode because it's getting a lot of praise so uh yeah those are my overall thoughts hope you guys enjoyed watching